Meanwhile, a new report from the nonprofit Safeguard Defenders reveals there are at least six more Chinese police stations across America. This after the Justice Department arrested two Chinese Americans for setting up and operating a secret Chinese police station in New York City, something that I have been reporting now for months. Here's what the White House had to say about this yesterday. Watch. Because the White House and the administration spoke to China. Um, can you give us an update? The U.S. government ha has been clear that we will use all available tools to protect American citizens and other U.S. persons from transnational repression and other forms of foreign malign uh, influence. We will not tolerate the PRC uh, government or any foreign government uh, harassing or threatening U.S. persons. Yeah, but we just did. We allowed a spy balloon to traverse the country for a week and send back military secrets in real time to Beijing. Uh, joining me right now is the Gatestone Institute senior fellow and author of The Coming Collapse of China and the Great U.S. China Tech War. Gordon Chang is here. And Gordon, I do believe that you were among the first people to report on this program that we had a police station in New York City. You knew it. Uh, you told us about it a long time ago, and I thank you for that, because you educated our audience on it. What is your take on all of this? We want to get your take on the Smithfield food situation that Lydia uh, just reported on, that it is actually owned by a Chinese company. Uh, should we be worried about that? And what about this police station? Well, we definitely need to be worried about Chinese investment into our agricultural sector. We have seen some very disturbing actions by Chinese parties, especially in states like Oklahoma, where there are allegations that uh, the Chinese are using their land for to base human trafficking operations, illegal drug cultivation. And of course, there have been the espionage allegations regarding Chinese purchases in North Dakota and Texas. Until we get to the bottom of this, we need to do something. Remember a couple of years ago, China was sending in invasive species, uh, seeds, into the United States unsolicited. Now, if the Chinese were to own more and more agriculture, they could very well plant those seeds and actually um, blight America's food production. Wow. You know, with regard to the police stations, the important thing here is that, uh, you know, why would they feel so bold to open them? Well, the answer is because a series of presidents going at least back to George W. Bush allowed Chinese Ministry of State Security officials and consular officials to openly violate America's sovereignty and did nothing about it. So, of course, the Chinese felt, yeah, let's open up police stations. And the thing about this, Maria, is that it shows China's utter disrespect for the United States. That could translate into things like flying spy balloons over the U.S., maybe also starting a war. So, really, this has consequences, China's attitudes towards us. So, what should be the response? Because putting this arrest aside to Chinese Americans who started and, and operate this police station, all of these provocations have been met with no response from this White House. And I know you say this goes back several different administrations, but the truth is, is we're talking about efforts over the last 50 years for the U.S. to try to open things up with China, try to uh, expect that the CCP comes to the middle, to recognize the, the fruits of democracy. That hasn't happened. Instead, the Chinese Communist Party has gone more inward, particularly with uh, Xi Jinping at the helm. So should the response be different this time along. What, what do you think the response should be to, to these provocations? The White House is reportedly preparing to unveil new rules which would limit American investments into China. I frankly think this is theatrics, but according to Politico, the new executive order is expected to require companies to notify the government of any new investments in Chinese technology firms. It's supposed to prohibit some deals in critical sectors like microchips. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is going to be delivering a, a speech on the U.S.-China economic relationship tomorrow, Gordon. What do you want to hear from her and from this White House? I want to hear what they're not willing to say, and that is that the United States needs to decouple from China because China is decoupling from us, yeah. and China is using the proceeds of our trade and investment to build a military which is configured to fight America. Now, these, men these actions that you mentioned, which will come uh, to fruition soon, you know, they're in the right direction, Maria, but they're not nearly far enough. And with regard to the police stations, we should close those other locations. We should be making arrests. We should be closing China's four consulates in the U.S. because they've been involved in violating our sovereignty. And we should be stripping the embassy in Washington just down to the ambassador. 
we do not need uh, these elements in the U.S. not only committing acts of subversion, but some of these consulates have been engaged in acts of war. And to bring this to a personal situation, about a year and a half ago, a consular official uh, of China in New York actually assaulted an American citizen, Jane Stein, when she was on the sidewalk beside the consulate engaging in First Amendment activities with regard to Tibet. We cannot have Chinese consular officials attacking Americans on American soil. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're not doing any of that. The House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party is going through a war game simulation for China's potential invasion of Taiwan. They're doing this later today. It's expected to give lawmakers a sense of how a conflict would unfold, where U.S. military weakness could be, and the impact it could have on the economy. Gordon, I spoke with Michael McCall, the chairman of the Foreign Affairs uh, Committee, and he's just back from Taiwan. He said Taiwan is not ready, partly because they don't have the weapons that the United States promised them. They already paid for them. He was talking to me about uh, a specific Starlink system. He's pushing the DOD to get that Starlink system into Taiwan so that they can get eyes and ears on the ground into China's backyard. Here's Michael McCall from Sunday. Watch. You know, I talked about ISR, that's intelligence, surveillance, recognizance. Uh, China can, yeah, has eyes and ears on the ground everywhere uh, in the Pacific region. Uh, we have some. But Taiwan has none. And we talked about the idea, like we did in Ukraine, putting up a Starlink satellite system to give Taiwan eyes and ears on the ground to see into China, to see the threat before it comes, so they can stop it from invading the island. Gordon, it had to be incredibly chilling for the House members and Michael McCall to be there on the island visiting, meeting with these officials, and around them are 71 fighter jets from China, um, an aircraft carrier, uh, another 10 uh, ships. I mean, what would a blockade look like? Do you worry about it? Well, we absolutely have to worry about it. You know, and Chairman McCall is right, and he's highlighting something. The United States, for a very long time, prevented Taiwan from buying the right type of equipment to deter China. And, of course, now we've slow-walked the delivery of equipment. Taiwan's paid for something like $19 billion worth of weapons, which we have not actually sent over. So, you know, now there is no sense of urgency in the Pentagon. And it's not just there as well. It's in the State Department and the Oval Office. You know, China is making fast preparations for war, and the Pentagon has decided not to notice. All right. We will leave it there. Gordon, thanks very much for weighing in on all of that. Very serious topic. Gordon Chang joining us.